colony. After three dry days and nights, my father became a different man. Listen, I just need a drink, he said, pulling me in, locking his arms around my neck. Holding me close to his chest, the transformation began. For the first time I heard the ants inside him, crossing the bone bridges of ribs, chattering in their strange ant language. Last in a long line of ant children, I had come to understand it. The buzz that surrounded him. The rub of anxiety when the workers were tired or thirsty. I knew when the young were hungry. When the queen was angry. The mass had turned his heart into a bottleneck. See here, the medic said tapping the x-ray, outlining the invisible nest, the spaces where the eggs were gestating. Towards the end, it took four strong men to hold him as his abdomen swelled out of proportion. Later, they sedated him so the chattering became a hum, a moan that droned on and on. By then his hair was long gone, limbs shriveled to filaments. I stood by and watched. The great dome of his head become too much for the body the slackening of the all-powerful mouth that could once bite and cut precisely. A mouth that had once been strong enough to clamp a wound shut. A stitch that would hold even when the head came adrift from the body. That same mouth hung open spilling the beans on his other children. Brave little soldiers milling around him. I watched them scatter with the fragments. He's been dead ten years or more, but I still see them every so often, marching past my door, every one of them carrying a load bigger than its own body, holding it up as if it weighs nothing at all. <laughs>